Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and we have a very interesting story to talk about today because we all know that occasionally it seems like Nintendo is fairly out of touch with things outside of their inner circle. They don't always pay attention to not just things happening in technology, but things happening in general out in the world. Nintendo has sort of lived in its own bubble, at least for a certain amount of time. Now we do know under Shintaro Furukawa, he has talked about how they invested all this money into research and development over the last couple of years, over a billion dollars USD both years, because they are actually looking into, well, other things outside the company, right? They're looking into outside technologies, looking into outside software, out, basically Nintendo's broadening their horizons, something they probably should have did quite a while ago, but hey, you know what? That thinking internally has really worked for Nintendo over the years, so can't say that I blame them. And What's interesting is one of Nintendo's most iconic franchises and iconic characters is none other than Samus Aran from Metroid, right? We all know Samus, the infamous worldwide infamous bounty hunter. And the funny thing is, Samus hasn't really done a ton of bounty hunting despite being a world famous bounty hunter because, well, you know, Nintendo apparently did not know what bounty hunting was when they decided to call her a bounty hunter. They thought bounty hunting was just adventures in space. Didn't realize that uh, you're actually doing things for money. Um, it, it's very interesting. Uh, we learned this from a former retro uh, developer. So let's get into uh, what was said here on, it was from the latest episode of Did You Know Gaming, which I will link to that video if you want to go watch Did You Know Gaming's uh, content. But I'm going to read a summary here from Go Nintendo. I, I found it to be quite interesting. So uh, it says, former retro dev says Nintendo didn't understand what a bounty hunter was and shares more Metroid Prime insight. Um, so over the weekend, we shared new a new feature from Did You Know Gaming that went over the history of the Metroid Prime franchise. That video included a bunch of details about Metroid Prime that you might not know, and we've collected a handful of the juicier details below. One of the more startling revelations came from Retro and Nintendo's understanding of what a bounty hunter was. For Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, Retro was thinking of giving Samus various side missions that would earn her upgrades. Retro knew that Nintendo wouldn't want Samus going out on actual bounty hunts to get money, so they thought this approach was a nice way to meet in the middle. Nintendo saw things very differently. According to Brian Walker, senior producer on Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, Nintendo saw Samus as an altruistic character and even called her motherly, which seems very weird to call Samus that. Samus took on her missions out of the goodness of her heart and not for some sort of monetary slash ability enhancing motivations. This led Retro and Nintendo discussing bounty hunters in general, and Retro came to learn that Nintendo simply didn't understand what a bounty hunter was. Nintendo thought the term was more in line with space adventurer rather than someone who hunts down targets for rewards. You know, the whole bounty thing? <laughs> uh, with that explanation, Retro could see why Nintendo was against their original side mission idea for corruption. That wasn't the only surprising bit of information shared by Did You Know Gaming about the Metroid Prime series either. We came to learn that the very early beginnings of Metroid Prime came from another game that Retro was working on, but Nintendo wasn't too keen on some of the ideas. Metroid Prime can find its roots in Metaforce, a third person game starring three female metahumans. This game took you through chapters focused on each metahuman, complete with their own enemies to fight. The story actually incorporated elements of Gen uh, gene editing in order to create the perfect human, cult leaders, and a neo-Nazi eugenist. Believe it or not, Nintendo liked the concept of the game, but they weren't too sure about having three main characters or the third-person perspective. As you know, Metaforce never saw release, and that's because the project eventually morphed into Metroid Prime. Obviously, the story was pretty much completely overhauled, but some slight elements of Metaforce do live on in Samus's first 3D adventure. And... I think what's interesting when we look at that is Nintendo, like, labeling Samus as, remember, the bounty hunter name, like, the whole Samus is a bounty hunter comes from Nintendo of Japan. So Nintendo of Japan have been labeling Samus for a bounty hunter for well over a decade by the time Metroid Prime came out. But Nintendo didn't know what that meant. Samus is not a motherly figure, right? I don't think any of us ever looked at Samus Aran and thought, Man, that's a really motherly finger. No, sometimes we look at her, she kicks ass, right? Like, that's true. Okay, yeah, she's a kick-ass character. But motherly? 
Um, I don't know that that's the term that I would use, um, an altruistic character. I, again, these are terms that don't really feel like they describe a bounty hunter. And that's because Nintendo didn't realize what bounty hunter meant. Uh, now, there obviously is, you know, barriers in languages. Uh, so Nintendo might have been calling her a bounty hunter. It obviously didn't mean for her to be a bounty hunter. But what's funny is... I don't know what Nintendo has against bounty hunting in general. I guess because they thought she was some mother, motherly altruistic character that going out and doing something for a reward didn't make sense. But in the end, that's what bounty hunters do, right? They're all you know self-serving in some way. They are out there to you know basically do something to benefit themselves. Uh, that's the whole point of bounty hunting. Now, obviously, we've seen you know in like Star Wars, that obviously has some famous bounty hunters in it. Uh, that they've kind of gone beyond that and show that there's there's still humans or there's still emotions involved and, and, and still care for people. But the general purpose is they take on their missions, they take on their stuff because they're getting paid or some sort of reward or upgrade to their ship or something like that in return. And if you ever wonder why that hasn't really become some massive staple of the series for some time, it's because Nintendo didn't realize that's actually what bounty hunting was in the first place. Um, so it's quite interesting just to see that Nintendo didn't really understand what they were doing in labeling the character a bounty hunter. Um, so I don't know. I, I find it fascinating just a little bit how out of touch Nintendo can be, uh, even with the, the own terminology they're doing and how nobody at Nintendo of America bother to explain to Nintendo of Japan that when you're calling her a bounty hunter, what that actually means. Now it could be that the fine people at Nintendo of America back in the 80s didn't really think it was that big of a deal because, hello, I mean, Bounty Hunter, Boba Fett, you know, from, uh, you know, Star Wars or any other, you know, books out there, Bounty Hunters are, are a very popular character type in a lot of games and a lot of books and films. So Nintendo of America might not have thought it was a big deal to call her a Bounty Hunter, but it was obviously fascinating when they were like, oh, she can't go on missions for rewards. That's not very Samus-like. That's not very motherly. She does she does things out of the goodness of her heart, not because it's something that's for her. And it, it, as you can see over time, her character has obviously morphed more into the Bounty Hunter mindset um where she is sort of inward thinking on how what she's doing could benefit herself um even though there's still some of that oh but she's also trying to benefit others kind of thing uh this might also have a nice explanation for why uh samus aran is the way she is in other m uh because again they, they they're trying to not have her be something that she's always been through their own definition, even though Nintendo didn't realize what they were defining Samus as. I don't know. I, I just find this this all to be hilarious. And on top of this, you guys have probably been seeing some footage here of a Metroid Prime remake. That's right. There is a project going on. Uh, well, it's really complete at this point. You can play Metroid Prime, the original game, in full 4K 60 FPS on PC right now. And this isn't just like your average, oh, I'm just running some emulator thing. No, this is like a fully remade thing by a fan. Of course, plan for Nintendo to shut this down at some point. But the good news is we didn't find out about this until it's already done. The game's done. It's on the internet. So now that it hit the internet, it's going to be available forever somewhere. So we'll put maybe a link to where you could get it right now if it hasn't been taken out by Nintendo yet. Because you know Nintendo's going to take it out. Especially since there's reports and rumors that they already have a Metroid Prime remake in the works. We saw what they did with Metroid Prime, um, you know, with, with, with the old Samus Returns. You know, before that, there was AM2R, and they took that out. So, yeah, Nintendo's probably going to take this out. But, hey, it, at least we didn't hear about it until it was already done. So, it's going to be on the internet forever. Go enjoy it. You can play it with a mouse and keyboard, it looks like. I don't know if it maps to a controller, but it um, looks really good. I really I really think it's a, it's a great job. It seems to stay really true to the original Metroid Prime. So, kudos to them for that, not taking a lot of... Uh, creative freedoms with it just really sticking to what the the base game is and i I, I would think a nintendo remake would probably go a bit further than this but uh for a fan project i think it turned out really really well so anyways folks i am nathaniel rubble jance from nintendo prime i want to thank you so much for tuning in if you enjoyed the video you made it this far why not subscribe to the channel drop a like all that i'm, I'm really excited uh that we have this kind of news to kick off the week we had sort of a dry end to last week and now here we have a really confusing nintendo didn't know what a bounty hunter was that's what? All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.